Case number five is from a 41 year old male. Here we have a uh, CT scan in a coronal view in a bone window showing an interesting mass in the triquetrum carpal bone. Here the black corresponds to a lytic process and centrally there's this white uh, nidus, central nidus corresponding to sclerotic bone uh, in the background of a predominantly lytic uh, process with circumscribed edges. This mass is centered within the carpal bone, is not destroying the bone, and gives us a relatively indolent, perhaps benign uh, diagnostic process. Tissue is obtained, which shows a circumscribed proliferation of disorganized anastomosine woven bone along the right. Uh, with a uh, circumscribed edge with larger um, cortical mature bone. Uh, this process um, is uh, not infiltrating the pre existing bone and is instead uh, growing up towards it, but not destroying this pre existing bone. And a higher power view. We can see that this bone is composed of haphazard uh, distribution of woven bone with osteoblastic rimming. See, the, you can see the osteoblasts uh, rimming this bone. And then the background stroma is very richly vascularized. See all these uh, blood vessels here, um, it's scattered osteoclasts in the background. So we have this relatively indolent radiographic picture of a predominantly lytic process with a central uh, bony nidus um, with a benign appearance. Uh, histologically, we've got the circumscribed proliferation composed of disorganized inner anastomosine uh, spicules of woven bone with osteoblastic rimming and a richly vascularized stroma without cytologic atypia, without nuclear anaplasia. This is a osteoid osteoma or osteoblastoma. And that is a diagnosis um, arbitrarily uh, designated by the size. So these are histologically identical and we use a size cutoff of two centimeters. There are some additional um, clinical features that um, may uh, be associated with one versus the other, which I'll discuss here. So osteoid osteomas are typically um, less than two centimeters associated with pain more often at night that is relieved by NSAIDs. Osteoid osteoma typically occurs in long bones in the cortex of a long bone, uh, more so than in the posterior elements of the vertebrae. Osteoblastomas, uh, on the other hand, are larger than two centimeters. Typically, patients will complain of dull pain that is unresponsive to NSAIDs. Osteoblastomas are more common in the uh, posterior elements of the spine, more so than in long bones in the cortex. Now, both osteoid osteomas and osteoblastomas have overlapping features. They typically arise in younger patients, more commonly in males. Uh, radiographically, we we'll, typically see a well-defined cortical radiolucency with a central punctate nidus of ossification. Histologically, it's well-circumscribed mass with a sharp margin um, composed of trabeculae of inner anastomosine woven bone with osteoblastic rimming and a background richly vascularized stroma. Uh, treatment is for symptomatic um, cases only which can be treated with on-block excision, curatage, radiofrequency ablation, or thermal ablation.